Hi everyone, myself Dr. M. Rashmi Prasad, working as an associate professor in the Department of Data Science in Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Hyderabad. In this video, I am going to discuss about the overview of statistics and what are the various levels of measurement on statistics. So when it comes to statistics, so statistics is nothing but a branch of science which is going to be deal with collection, presentation, analysis and interpretation of data and it should also provide the various methods for analyzing and assessing the significance of the data. And this statistics going to be enable the transformation of data into information so that can be served as the basis for the decision making. So statistics is nothing but a branch of science, so which is going to be deal with the collection of the data and presentation of the data, analysis and then interpretation of the data. So normally these kind of there are so many kinds of uh, methods are available for analyzing and then assessing the significance of the data. This this statistics going to be enable the transformation of the data into information so that can be served as the basis for the uh, decision making. So for the making this decision, uh, we have to be uh, so many kinds of methods and then we have how the data is going to be transformed into information. So when it comes to the importance of statistics, so statistics are going to be present the facts and figures in definite form and which should also helps to condense the data and which should also give the idea about the shape, spread and symmetry of the data. Normally it is going to facilitate the comparison and then it should also measure the relationship between the two or more variables and it should also help in estimation and the prediction. Normally, this is going to be helpful uh, in formulating and testing the hypothesis or new theory. So, normally, this should be helpful in planning, controlling, and decision making. So, normally, uh, the importance of statistics is that so mainly it is going to present the facts and then figures in definite form and. Using this statistics, uh, we, can, uh, we can also the condense the data and it also gives the uh, ideas about the shape, spread and then symmetry of the data. Normally, these statistics may be uh, useful for uh, facilitating the comparison and it also makes the relationship between the two or more variables. And normally at the same time, so uh, the statistics helps in uh, estimation and then making the prediction. And it should also be helpful in formulating the testing the hypothesis or a new theory as well. So normally these statistics may also be helpful in planning, controlling and then in decision making. So there are two different types of statistics. So first one is the descriptive statistics. And second one is that informative statistics. So descriptive statistics is that. So uh, it is going to be. So there are uh, two types of uh, statistics here. So first one is the descriptive statistics, and second one is the information statistics. So descriptive statistics is going to be organized and then describe this and summarize the characteristics of the data, and it should also include the construction of graphs charts, tables and then with calculation of various numerical measures such as mean, median, standard deviation and percentile etc. So normally does not involve uh, in generalizing the, the data at hand. So descriptive statistics is the one kind of uh, statistics which is going to be organizers as well as describe and then summarize the characteristics of the data here. So the data what is going to have so that thing for the data we can able to organize the data and we can able to describe the data and then we can also the summarize the data based on the characteristics. So by using this statistics we can also be construct some of the graphs like uh, uh, charts also and uh, tables and then we can also some of the uh, calculation of various numerical measures such as mean, uh, median, standard deviation, percentile etc. So normally does not involve in generalizing beyond the data at hand. So let's take an example like a batsman wants to find his batting average for the first 12 months so, and then this is one of the example and then politician, politician also wants to know the average the number of votes that he want to receive in the past three years at the same time the average daily the temperature of the Pune uh, city so like this these are the some of the examples that comes under the descriptive statistics 
and second one is the informa- uh, inferential statistics so inferential statistics mainly concerned with drawing the conclusions as well as the predictions about the population so from the analysis so based on the random sample drawn from the population so it should also be include some of the methods like a point estimation interval estimation and hypothesis testing so this uh, inferential statistics mainly going to be drawn some of the conclusions of the predictions uh, of the population so normally from the analysis of random sample that is going to be drawn from the population so if i am going to have a population like this and from this i am going to extract some sample of this population and this should be the sample so by using this statistics i can able to apply on this sample in order to make the conclusion as well as the prediction so for in order to make these calculations and then uh, predictions i have some of the methods that can be applied on it like point estimation and then interval estimation and next one is hypothesis testing so hypothesis testing is normally going to be used as a very uh, rarely, uh, very widely used method in uh, inferential statistics so say, see the examples like a politician would like to estimate on the pre election polling techniques uh, such as opinion polls and his chance for winning the upcoming uh, election and then the researcher wants to determine whether the treatment a is better than the treatment b so this kind of uh, problems can be solved through the inferential statistics so like so uh, the politician wants to know this uh, um, which uh, winning of uh, upcoming election and then the researcher wants to know whether the, which treatment is better than uh, some other treatment like this so these are all the problems that can maybe comes under the types of uh, statistics and some of the terminologies that would like to know here in this one is population so population is nothing but aggregation of uh, objects or individuals that comes under the study and sample means that any part of the solution that comes under the study and so the parameters that may be a numerical values which is going to be summarize the characteristics of the population under the investigation and the parameter values also typically unknown here and the statistics are normally numerical values so that summarize the characteristics of the sample so which can be used to estimate the parameter so the population is nothing but the aggregation of the objects or individuals under the study and the sample may be a, a part of the population under the study suppose uh, we have an example like uh, if we want to study the industrial development of x y z cities so there may be of uh, total 500 cities in the city so for that all these uh, uh, 500 industries constitute a population so the population means that so industries that comes under all the 500 industries here so that should be treated as a population so if i am going to choose randomly some of the industries among this so term industries i am going to sample so that thing uh, should be considered as a sample here and all this inst- uh, all this 10 industries constitute a sample and parameters is nothing but so these are the numerical values so which is going to be described or summarize the characteristics of the population under the investigation and the statistics are nothing but a numerical values which summarize the characteristics of the sample so the parameters is going to be applied uh, in population and then the statistics is going to be applied in this the sample of the population so there are different types of the data what i am going to uh, tell is that interval so interval is nothing but a defined constant difference between the different levels of the data okay so interval means uh, it should be defined constant which came it takes the difference between the different levels of the data and ordinal means that so this should be the hierarchical structure of the levels of the data but the differences between the levels should be either undefined or variable and nominal means there should not there be a no hierarchy in the structure of the data so normally no order in the size of the values so these are the three different types of the data what i said so the interval means uh, within this uh, 
defined constants i can able to make the differentiate between the different levels of the data and here ordinal means uh, here there should be hierarchical structure uh, to the levels of the data but the difference between the levels should be either undefined or variable a nominal is no hierarchy in the structure of the data is going to maintain at the same time no order in the size of the values so this should be the nominal one so description of data so like uh, interval data what is that so interval data is going to be uh, uh, measures of central tendency like means uh, mean median and the mode i can able to take it out and the sum of the measures of uh, dispersion also i'm going to consider like variance standard deviation percentile quartile interquartile range and then range so these are some of the uh, measures of dispersion that can be applied on interval data and these are some of the measures of uh, central tendency among interval data so when it comes to this ordinal data that means uh, here the central tendency means mean and median uh, mean uh, sorry more than median only there should not be mean here and dispersion means here interquartile range and range i am going to be constant so when it comes to the nominal one so here i am able to consider the percentages proportions and mode so these are the some of the numerical descriptions about the various levels of data like interval means uh, measures of central tendency like mean median and then mode and measures of dispersions like variance standard deviation percentile and then quartile interquartile range and then range so when it comes to the ordinal one so i have, don't have this mean here so i can able to have only the median and then more and when it comes to discussion dispersion it should be the interquartile range or range a nominal means it should be percentages and then proportions or more so what is measures of central tendency so mean what should be the mean here so mean is nothing but the average value for all the values and then the strongly affected by extreme value and then skew distribution and median means uh, the middle most value of an ordered set of values so not affected by extreme values or skew distributions and mode means most common value of the data set or the value with the highest frequency so these are the things we can able to consider here so the mean means the average of all the values will be treated as a mean and then strongly affected by extreme of values and then skew distributions and median means that so the middle most value of ordered set of values so not affected by extreme values or skew distributions and mode uh, mode is the sense uh, the most common value of the data or the value which the highest frequency so normally if i am going to have a data like this so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so the sum mean should be uh, the sum of all the values by the number of values so that means 1 plus 2 plus 4 5 6 7 8 by 8 that should be the mean value and median should be the middle value of this series of order set and uh, mode means the most occurring the frequency of the data set suppose if i am going to have some more data like this so the most occurring is the uh, is one so that should be the mode mode should be one here and so uh, this one uh, the symmetry is also is going to be divided into two ways like negatively skewed distribution and positively skewed distribution so negatively skewed distribution means where the curve may be uh, reflected to left side and positively skewed means the curve should be reflected to the right side and this should be the perfect symmetric distribution here there should be no skewed here this should be the normal one so negative means we can able to move to the left side the curve should be and positively means that the curve is going to move to the right side then measures of dispersion here so here the range what should be the range here 
so the difference of the maximum and minimum value that should be the uh, range and variance means so the mean of skew difference of the individual values from the mean so the mean of the squared difference of individual values from the mean so if the variance is going to be high the values are going to be highly dispersed and the probability data set is not reliable and the standard deviation is nothing but the square root of the variance and the coefficient of variance means we are able to consider the standard deviation mean into 100 and the measure of precision's data should be less than 5 percent then it should then only it should be good and the standard error means so here it should be a measure of the precision so where the pop of the various population here normally the mean should be the standard deviation by the square root of n that should be the standard error and the confidence uh, limits is that so the mean value i'm going to be considered which should also have a measure of the precision of the data set and here uh, this should be used to estimate the various parameters from the sample statistics so the measures of dispersion is going to be had some of the topics like range variance standard deviation and then coefficient of variation and then conference limit so the range is nothing but it should be a difference among the maximum and minimum value and the variance is the sense of the mean of this standard deviation so the mean of this square difference of the individuals that should be considered as the mean and the standard deviation is nothing but the square root of the variance and coefficient of variance is equal to the standard deviation that should be divided by the uh, mean into multiplied by the 100 here and the standard error is the value of the precision so which is going to be uh, for the population and this should be calculated by standard deviation of the divided by the square root of n and the confidence limit should be the mean value at the press uh, plus or minus of 1.96 standard error so it should be also measure the precision of the data here so normally this one is going to be used to estimate the population parameters from the sample statistics so there are different types of statistics uh, like uh, descriptive statistics and explanatory statistics so descriptive means it should be the frequency and descriptives and explanatory is should be uh, t-test and then ANOVA, ANOVA and then correlation and multiple regression so normally this descriptive statistics is going to be applied among these top concepts and then inferential statistics is going to be applied on this taste test and on our cal and multiple regression and correlation concepts so descriptive statistics means that it should be divided into categories like frequency and then descriptive so and then inferential statistics means it should be the difference among the groups then it should be enabled to apply t-text and ANOVA test and if i'm going to be know the relations between the variables then i can able to apply correlation and multiple regression so the inferential statistics is the one kind of statistics so it should be of again segregated into two groups like differences between the groups and then the relationship between the variables so if i'm go for the groups here then i can able to apply t test and then ANOVA test Whereas this the relationship between the variables, I can able to consider the correlation and then multiple regression. So if I'm going to consider this hypothesis, uh, then uh, I can able to go for prediction of groups in the same variable and the prediction of relationships. So just now I said that uh, I can able to apply the t-text and ANOVA. Whereas this prediction of the relationships, I can go for the correlation and then multiple uh, regression. And when it comes to the measurements, levels of measurements, so I'm going to discuss some of the various measurements what I have to be considered in statistics. So measurement is nothing but a set of rules for assigning the numbers, so which you present the values, so not just the numbers, but varying the degrees of the patient and for the reported or the observation behaviors attitudes opinions and other individual group organization content or issue characteristics everything should be uh, uh, comes under the measurement here so measurement is nothing but the set of rules so assigning for numbers where which can represent the values so for varying the degrees of the precision or for reported 
or observation behaviors, attitudes like this. So the measurement should be uh, valid or and maybe a reliable one. Uh, so valid means uh, here it should be a correct or not. That should be valid. Like suppose if I'm going to consider the length. So length should be normally measured in centimeters. Suppose if I'm going to write between cages, it should not be a valid one. So similarly reliable. So the data what I'm going to be consider is it reliable or not? So these are the characteristics you have to be known. So normally, uh, in order to determine this uh, quality of the measure, we have a measure called sound measure. So that should be this reliability and then validity. So reliability means the item shows the consistent patterns is nothing but reliability. And validity means uh, this should be a measure. So what you are going to be, uh, what you think you are going to be measuring, that should be the validity. So in order to determine this uh, uh, quality, like quality of measure, so we have to consider the two criteria. So one is that reliability and second is that validity here. So the validity means, so item is going to be shown the consistent patterns or not is nothing but the reliability. Whereas validity means where we're going to measure what you're thinking you are measuring, everything is correct or not, that should be the validity. So there are different levels of measurement, like uh, levels of measurement and types of data and types of variables. So all this will come under the levels of measurement. So consider uh, there are different types of levels of measurement like nominal scale, ordinal scale, interval scale, and the ratio scale. So these are the various levels of measurement, what I call. And types of data, the data that comes under this nominal scale should be considered as a nominal data. And ordinal scale should be considered as ordinal data. And interval scale should be interval data. And ratio scale should be ratio data. The, ta the types of variables also look something similar like the nominal variable, ordinal, real interval and ratio scale. So the examples that may become under this will be so gender, marriage, status and so these are the examples that may be comes under nominal one and ordinal means education so normally so grades of the student like this this is one of the example i can consider education for the ordinal data and interval means so here iq and then decade scales so these are now will be some example that comes under the interval scale. So interval, what should be the scales in between 1992, uh, 2012, like this. So this interval will come under the example of interval scale. And ratio scaling. So ratio scaling examples will be income and age. Okay. So this should be the uh, I guess examples of different levels of measurement. So levels of measurement will be different types like nominal should also be called as a qualitative and categorical and ordinal interval and then ratio scale. So these are the various levels of measurement. And the types of data means so here the nominal one, ordinal interval and ratio scale. So these are the different types of data and types of variables will be nominal, ordinal interval and ratio data. Uh, this and all will be this different types of variables and some of the examples are this. So what should be the nominal scaling exactly what I can able to set. So example is that so gender. So it should be male or it may be a female. This should be the nominal scaling. Here, here we should not have any kinds of measurements here. And it does the numbers uh, do not carry any kind of numerical meanings so that is two so female is not larger than one like this so this and all will not be there so just it should be gender that means male or it may be a female that's it and using these numbers you can able to represent the different categories and descriptors also so the descriptors have uh, no relationship among themselves so the description of labels will be this normally any kind of relationship are not going to be considered uh, among these values and so here uh, so the nominal scaling means so it should be a, a number does not carry any numerical things and does not have any kind of uh, relationships among themselves
and next one is that ordinal scaling so ordinal scaling means how often uh, do you go to this Starbucks? That, that should be one of the example. Like, so, so per week, how many number of people are going? And within this, one to two times of the week, common members are going. Three to six times per week, and more than seven times per week. So this should be the ordinal. So I'm segregating this some particular order. So how many number of uh, people are going to be uh, go for the Starbucks restaurant like this? So like so, zero percent per people how many and one to two times how many number of people are coming for in a week and three to six times in between the range and more than some weeks seven times per week I can able to calculate this. So this this should be the description plus ordering is going to be considered. Then should be a ordinal scaling here. And interval scaling. So interval scaling means we should be example like IQ score. In various interval measure that means uh, what should be the IQ level in between 95 to 110 I would like to know so if I'm going to so normally this should be this uh, equal uh, interval uh, measure that means 95 to 100 so it should be and that should be is equal to 105 minus 100 So this should be the IQ levels what I'm going to consider. So that means the description plus order plus equal distance. If I'm going to add, then it should be the interval scaling here. So next example is that how much do you agree with the statements and happy with this? It uh, it had a services. So example I'm going to consider like total disagree, disagree, neutral, agree, uh, agree and then total agree. So this should be this assumption here. So it should be like some people may be able to give disagree and some people may be able to give agree here. So how much uh, do you agree with the statement normally? It should be the assumed interval that should not be any fixed here. So this is all the example that can comes under the interval scale. So see, uh, see uh, similarly if I'm going to consider here. So this uh, strongly disagree with rating and also consider and then strongly agree it should be fine. So this uh, in this way also I can able to uh, implement this. So what should be the difference between the ordinal and interval here? So ordinal means and then interval means what is the difference here? So how important is money to you? So another example. So not very important, fairly important, very important and mostly important in my life. So like this. So whether I, this should be comes under the ordinal one or it may be comes under the interval one that should have to be known. So the ordinal means you have to be follow some particular order. So here order is following. And at the same time, interval. So I'm interval also I'm maintaining with the difference of one here. So whether this comes into ordinal one or interval one. So see here. So this should be the order I'm going, and this should be interval also same. So this should be the segregation of this various uh, interval and then ordinal data. And next one is that ratio scaling. So this should be uh, adding up one level to interval scaling and ratio scales are the one in which the true uh, zero origin exists. So that means that uh, if we are going to add one more level to the interval scaling, then it should be the ratio scaling. So ratio scalings are the one. So it should be a true uh, zero or it may be a exists of this zero origin exists or not. So normally example like this is so income is should be the ratio variable that means so when one year she is the having those uh, $10,000 in another year it should be $20,000 and another year it should be thirty and it should be $40,000. The ratio is normally increasing one so income also one of the example for ratio scaling. So that means here description I have to consider and then order also I have to consider and then equal also had to consider equal distance at the true zero point also i'm going to be considered here so all this will be an example of this ratio scaling if i'm going to consider all this like description order equal distance and zero point so everything should be under the ratio scale 
So then what should be the difference between the ratio scaling and interval? So the similarities between the intervals and ratios should be that. So increasing or decreasing order and then equal intervals. And the difference between the intervals and ratio that means the meaning of zero and interval scaling that means that does not carry any true zero meaning and ratio scaling does carry true zero meaning. So the similarities that exist between the interval and ratio should be increasing and decreasing in order and then equal intervals. So these are the two main characteristics or similarities that exist between the ratio and interval and differences between the interval and ratio is that so interval scaling and then ratio scaling that means interval scaling does not carry the true zero point meaning whereas the ratio scaling is going to be carry this true zero meaning here. So this should be the hierarchy of this uh, data. So like, so the nominal should be this nominal data. What is that? That should be the subset of this ordinal data. And this ordinal and nominal should be the subset of this interval. And all these three should come under the subset of ratios. So all these subsets, okay. So the main should be the ratio. So if I'm going to consider nominal, so if I'm, if it is should be ordinal, which I'm going to consider nominal is enough. If it is interval, means it should be ordinal data as well as the nominal data. And if it is ratio, means it should be the combination of interval plus ordinal, and then it should be nominal. So, what are the various uh, measurements can differ through characteristics? So, I'm considering the level of measurement here and description. So, everything should be. Uh, descriptive statistics only and order here I'm not maintaining any order in nominal one so remaining so as in a ordinal interval and ratio scale I'm following this order and distance I'm going to maintain only in interval and then ratio I'm not going to be considered in nominal and interval and zero origin is not going to be considered in nominal ordinal and interval so uh, in ratio only I am going to be considered. So these are the some of the measurement scale different through characteristics. So the nominal means so all should be the descriptive statistics only, but the order is not going to maintain in nominal. So remaining order will be considered, and distance is going to be considered only in no interval and ratio and does not consider in nominal and ordinal. And zero origin it should be others only maintained in ratio scaling. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.